the three mistakes the vast majority of manufacturers are making right now. Take zero. All right, so happy new year, 2026. This is our first video of the new year. And uh, I asked the team to put together a list of questions that people have been asking us um, over the last uh, month or so. And the number one question by far that people have been asking us is, can we shoot a video that articulates, clearly articulates the mistakes that the vast majority of manufacturers are making right now. <clears throat> Let me start by saying, you know, this is obviously the post agentic AI world. And I've shot a bunch of videos talking about, you know, autonom autonomous AI, agentic AI, what's the real value of AI. <clears throat> and, you know, a little hint, a little insight into the community for 2026. You know, AI is going to be the centerpiece of basically everything we do. We're doing Mastermind here uh, Friday. I'm actually teaching Mastermind this Friday. We have a, a bunch of new students in the program. And this year, we're actually starting Mastermind over. I'm On Friday, in fact, I am shooting a lesson. The lesson that I'm teaching Friday is the original Mastermind session that I ever did, but in the context of AI. So the, one, the very first uh, Mastermind lesson we ever did back in 2020, I think it was, but I'm redoing the entire lesson but in the post AI world, right? And, and, and really a lot of what we're doing in 2026 is gonna follow that theme, all right? And so when I answer the question, you know, what are the, the biggest mistakes that manufacturers are making right now? You know, I spent 2025, I traveled more in 2025 than I have in years. Multiple trips to Europe, I saw manufacturers all over the world. Um, I, I consulted for manufacturers in every region in the world. So I do feel like I'm adequately positioned to answer this question. Um, and I don't think it's going to surprise a lot of people, the three mistakes, maybe one of them. But all right, number one, first and foremost, manufacturers are, they are still failing to clearly define the problem they are trying to solve with digital specifically, right? They are... It's amazing to me the number of organizations who know digital is important, which is a good thing. They know that, uh, you know, unlocking the potential of the fifth industrial revolution through agentic AI is important, but they're not putting the potential of the technology in the context of the problems their businesses face. And I'm not talking about quantifying the cost of a specific business problem and then trying to calculate ROI and then go out and, you know, write an RFP and have somebody come in and solve their business problem. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm saying is, is that manufacturers are really struggling to clearly define what problem they're trying to solve from a macro level, right? So an example would be the vast majority of manufacturers, the vast majority should be looking to transition from being a company that converts raw materials into finished goods as their primary commodity. They should be transitioning to the core of their business is they are a data company that converts raw materials into finished goods. The problem they're trying to solve is one of their business model, right? Um, <clears throat> because that is the problem most manufacturers face today. And oftentimes in most organizations, the most valuable commodity in the business is not the thing that they're directly selling today. It's the thing that they should be directly selling tomorrow. They should start by using that data to improve their operations, their efficiency, their execution, their safety, their recruitment and retention of the employees of the future <laughs> through data, through technology. They should be doing that while they are building an infrastructure to collect, organize, normalize, contextualize, and store data for sale to other consumers. Okay. Um, <laughs> little hint here. All manufacturers have a, a lifespan. I mean, think about it. <clears throat> I think a lot of people complain about, like in the modern age, 
there's very few things that we just buy off the shelf and we just own them forever. You know, there's no, you know, the, the, the advent of the DLC in video games. Like, why do we have digitally licensed content in video games? Well, it's so the video game manufacturer can make more money. The, the developer can make more money because they can't afford to pay their bills by just develop, you know, paying labor to develop a game and then sell a million copies of a game, you know, print a CD and then put it in a case and then sell a million copies of it. Eventually they don't sell any more of it. So either they got to come up with a new version of it or they got to come up with a new game and that, and that research and development costs a lot of money. So rather than selling Madden 2025 every year, what you really should do is build an engine that is Madden and then each year sell digitally licensed content that expands on the core of the, the game, right? That's, that's, this is the, that's the illustration of transforming manufacturing. You know, video game manufacturers are only manufacturers in terms of creating discs. And now you just download games. Think about it. If I'm, um, you know, if I'm a keyboard manufacturer, Okay, I, I manufacture keyboards or, um, you know, cans are a little different because cans are consumable. Like there is a infinite number of cans of Celsius I might drink in my life, right? I don't just buy one can of Celsius. I, I drink two of these every day. And so it's Walker <laughs> two per day times days I'm alive is the number of cans that you could sell from me. But how many keyboards do I buy in my life? So if you're a manufacturer of keyboards, for example, um, you're on a shortened lifespan if all you're doing is saying our profit is going to come from the conversion of the raw materials, the subassemblies that I buy from this into a keyboard that I can sell at a price competitive enough where people will want this. The, qual the experience and the quality and the price, um, they all intersect so that this is the keyboard and mouse I want, by the way. This is a magic keyboard and mouse for my Mac. I have many Macs. I have many sets of these keyboard and mice, and I have, I have them everywhere in every one of my offices. They are, so, they are that good. Uh, das keyboard is my favorite mechanical keyboard. Uh, I think they're a German company. They are on a, if, if all they're doing is in the business of selling keyboards, they have a finite lifespan, okay? Um, how long can you continue to manufacture keyboards and sell them and make money? But imagine you were a keyboard manufacturer who collects data off how people use keyboards, which keys they click in which order, which mistakes they make the most. Okay. Um, imagine you had that data and that you could sell that data to all other keyboard manufacturers, or you could sell it to, AI companies who are who want to create agents who will cor correct accurately correct our spelling and grammar on the fly as we're typing. That's valuable. That is a that is a problem manufacturers are trying to solve. Well, the the macro problem is how do I go from a company that just turns raw materials into finished goods into a company a data company who also <laughs> manufacturers a vessel that converts raw materials into finished goods, and that vessel is how we collect the data. This is Tesla's business model, okay? So you have to ask the question, why do you want to be digital, okay? And what is your digital strategy? And that digital strategy needs to be architecture, technology, minimum technical requirements. That strategy needs to be, here's why we want to be digital. Here is why we want to convert from a company that just goes raw material to finish good to a company who sells data. And the raw material to finish good supports that business. Okay, that's problem number one. The vast majority, and I, I can't tell you the number of manufacturers I talked to last year who can't clearly define the problem they're trying to solve at a macro level. If you, don't, if you can't define that problem, you're not going to be able to define the micro problems. Okay, how do I, how do I solve this problem in my manufacturing operation in the context of our digital strategy. That's problem number one. Problem number two, this is a huge one. This is a fucking huge one in the post AI world. Manufacturers who were late to the digital transformation game, digital transformation, fourth industrial revolution, 
is all about uh, the automation of business decisions, right? Primarily, it was happening in the manufacturing execution layer, okay? The manufacturers who are late to that game, connect, collect, store, analyze, visualize, find patterns, report, and solve, common infrastructure, iteration. Uh, after ChatGPT came out and we're in the agentic AI world, the number one problem manufacturers have in that arena is they're trying to run before they can walk. Walking is digital strategy, architecture, technology, minimum technical requirements, connect, collect, store, analyze, visualize, find patterns, report, and solve. Connect, collect, store, analyze, visualize, find patterns, report, and solve. Iteratively, 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 I build a digital infrastructure. This is where unified namespace comes in. And then I plug into a digital supply chain. So now I'm connected to the, the full supply chain, not just the links upstream and downstream. The connect, collect, store is and analyze, visualize, that is walking. It's the minimum requirement. After digital strategy, it is the minimum requirement. You have to have a digital infrastructure in order to unlock the potential of agentic AI. Let me say it again. You must have a digital infrastructure to unlock the potential, a potential of agentic AI. And too many manufacturers are trying to skip over the walking phase right now. And they're wondering why they're failing. I mean, one of the other questions that you guys have asked me to answer, and I'm going to answer it in a later video, is why do so many successful pilots never turn into real results? The, the other question is what should be clear before you invest in new technology? I'm going to answer those later in other videos. Well, why do so many successful pilots never turn into real results? Because manufacturers are trying to run before they walk. And they're doing it without clearly defining the problem they're trying to solve. Okay, connect, collect, store, analyze, visualize, must come first. Okay, it doesn't, it, it, it comes before unlocking the potential of agentic AI, which is running. Okay, and number three, this is probably the biggest one, I would say. This is probably the biggest problem. And manufacturers are learning this the hard way, okay? But manufacturers are trying to replace people with AI rather than leveraging AI to unlock the potential in people. Okay, I mean, when I was answering these questions, you know, they sent me the questions and I like immediately under what mistakes, this is literally what I wrote. I wrote <laughs> in, in 10 seconds, what mistakes are most, com are, are most companies making right now? And I wrote, not clearly defining the problem they're trying to solve. Why do they want to be digital? What is the digital strategy? They're trying to run before they walk. Connect, collect, store comes first. And number three, they're trying to replace people with AI rather than leveraging AI to unlock the potential in people. I can't tell you the number of manufacturers who, when I ask them, why do they want to use agentic AI in their business? They say, I want to reduce headcount. Cannot tell you the number of manufacturers who are saying that. Guess which manufacturers aren't saying that? The digital ones. The one where data is the primary commodity. Okay, obviously you're always playing with headcount. Obviously you want to reduce people in high risk positions or positions that are hard to fill. Right? If it takes me eight months to fill a position, ideally I don't want a person in that position. It costs me too much money to do that, okay? I become too reliant on a person that I can't replace, okay? That is if they, they decide to retire or they want to move on. Like, I don't want to be in a position where I, I'm so reliant on, on a person, okay? There, there are scenarios where you want to reduce headcount, especially around safety, okay? But what is the real value of artificial? Anybody who has been working with agentic AI knows that the real value in agentic AI is in its impact on human beings, not in its ability to replace them. And it's, it's like, it's a surefire way of me knowing that the person I'm talking to is a fucking moron. They are a fucking moron. If you think that the promise of agentic AI is in replacing people, how fucking dumb could you be? Like, just do a little homework. Just a little. J just play with the tech a little. Okay? Manufacturers, and, and, and there is a clear line in the sand between the manufacturers who get the promise of Agentic and the manufacturers who don't. It is a clear fucking line. 
And right now, if you are a manufacturer who believes that the promise of agentic AI, the real promise, the real value in agentic AI is in the reduction of headcount, it is not in the um, and it is not it is not found through unlocking the potential in people which gains efficiency and capacity. Therefore, that we efficiency and capacity that we can invest into for growth, increasing headcount, not reducing headcount. Okay. If you if you are the if you're the group who believes it's about reducing headcount, then I'm putting you in the category of Kodak. You know, Kodak's conclusion on digital cameras was that photographers today, photographers were never going to get away from film. Never taking into account that the future photographer was going to grow up in a digital world. Like, talk about not being able to see past the eight inches in front of your fucking face. Okay? So number three. Trying to replace people with AI rather than leveraging AI to unlock the potential in people is a fool's errand. It is a fool's errand. And so the answer to your question, what mistakes manufacturers are making right now, they're not clearly defining the problem that they want to solve, especially on a macro level so that they can define it on a micro level. They're trying to run before they walk. They're forgetting, connect, collect, store, analyze, visualize. I don't know how the fuck they think that they can achieve becoming a digital company that unlocks the potential of agentic AI without first building a digital infrastructure. And number three, they are trying to replace people with AI rather than unlocking the potential in those people. And there is a clear bifurcation that you can tell which manufacturers get it and which ones are succeeding and which ones who don't get it and which ones are driving off a fucking cliff. Okay. All right, first video of 2026 over. Like, subscribe, comment down below, and I'll see you in the next one.